Hey guys, Adam Fennig here with Fennig Equipment. Today I'm here with Jason Webster with uh, Precision Planning. We're going to talk over a few things. Uh, Jason, you just gave an awesome presentation. Uh, we're down here in southern Indiana. But uh, let's talk some things like uh, strip tillage uh, that you're doing out there on your research farm. What do you feel like are a couple huge advantages of strip tillage today? Well, I think the main thing we're doing is putting fertilizer in bands. I mean, yeah. I think that's changed the game of how we're looking at fertilizer. For years, all I did was, and I, I refer to it as slinging fertilizer, broadcast um, applying fertilizer. And, and the thing I keep thinking in my head is why are we applying fertilizer on every square inch of soil when I'm not gonna have a root in every square inch of soil? So we call it luxury consumption, put in that fertilizer where the root is. It's one of the main ones. So do you believe that the strip tillage advantage comes from the placement of the fertilizer in a zone, the actual tillage, or the combination of both? Well, a combination of both. I mean, I'm still relying on strip to get my lift and fracture from the compaction I'm making in the field. I'm not straight no-till, I'm strip till. And so I am running eight to 10 inches deep. We try to do a good job. One of the things we do with strip is we don't put ammonia on because that slowed me down. And I was, it was way too wet and I was smearing because once we start getting cool, we start getting rains and then I don't have soils that are fit and we were creating compaction. So now I'm going early, eliminating the ammonia and just going dry. We have a lot of customers that are either doing full tillage or for full no-till. Strip tillage has been a great combination of both for guys to plant into a beautiful seed bed that already has nutrients placed under it, maybe get some of that weight off the planter and allow those uh, corn plants to thrive for longer periods of time into the summer. Yeah. Um, we, we have seen a huge push in strip tillage as well. Yeah, we've learned a lot from it in regard to how wide the strip needs to be. When I first started, we were making nice strips, but they were too narrow. The thing we've learned with strip till is the strip has got to be as wide as your planter row unit. The gauge wheel's got to fit inside the strip. Otherwise, you start speeding up on the planter, the gauge wheels fall off the strip, and then you get all this planter chatter, and then your, your planter performance just goes to pot. It's a very good, very good point. Um, I want to move on to planter fertilizer. Of course, mm -hmm. it's a huge topic, the dual placement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got a lot of guys doing pop-up and uh, dual placement of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on why placement of, on both sides of the row shows such a gain over a single side? Yeah, well, I mean, we call our in furrow and then relay outside um, with conceal the five point touch. So we're running three bands in the furrow, one right next to the seed, then we have a wing, and then we go outside of the furrow into, into what we call dual band nitrogen, dual band conceal. And it's a relay approach. Think about a small seedling growing in size in that root and just having additional bands of fertilizer as it expands, as it grows, and we're just continuing to feed that plant. It's luxury consumption. Again, we're not putting on more nutrients than what we need to. We're just putting it in the spot where it's easy to get to. We're not forcing the plant to work for it. Again, much like we talked on the strip tillage side, it's all about fertilizer placement. No longer do we need to broadcast and, and feed the whole field when we're only really using a very small portion of that. Same goes with the dual placement fertilizer. When we're on each side's kind of spoon feeding that crop, it goes a long way, uh, and, and we've seen that. Um, let's flip over to soybeans. You know, soybeans seem to be kind of the low hanging fruit. They're also, you know, knocking on $14. So I think we need to give them a little bit of attention. You talk some soybean populations and we've over, over the years been cutting that back as we get away from drills and mm -hmm. focus on 1790s and put some pre precision planting products on those planters. Mm -hmm. What do you feel is a, I'm not gonna say ideal population, but guys are wanting to cut back. What tools can they do to assist in cutting back? Yeah, well, spatial management is a big part of this. We gotta know what kind of dirt we're working with. I take a lot of slack at the research farm because we show we can push seeding rates lower on some of our better soils. But the moment we get into soils that are a little rough and tough and drought, drought stressy, that's when I generally have to increase seeding rate. So spatial management is big. We gotta know what kind of dirt we're working with and then we can address it. I love multi-variety soybean planting. You know, on tops of the hills, side hills, I wanna to go to a tall bean and I wanna increase seeding rate. I get down the bottom of the hill and the good black stuff, that's when I wanna to switch to a shorty soybean and I can thin those out. Make, I gotta make sure I got a bush, you know, a, a bean that can actually have lateral branches on it. But if we do that, that's been a really nice management program on beans. We've seen residue management and the proper closing techniques being oh, sure. huge parts of being aggressive on those 
uh, soybean yields. Would you agree with that? Yeah, closing has been a huge problem in the past. And, and I always kid with growers because you're planting along in the field, you can't see the closers behind you. You can't see them working at all. And we just don't know how well they're working. Now we're getting into a situation where we've got sensing abilities of the closing system. We're moving, we're being more aggressive when we're losing ground contact and when we're too heavy, we'll lift. We've got that same ability as what we've got with downforce now on the closer. And two things with the closing system, we're gonna create the V with our openers. We've gotta blow those sidewalls out, lift and fracture, get rid of that, those, those, those sidewall smears. And then we gotta push an air pocket out. And the problem is most closing systems can't do both of that in tandem. Exactly. Well, that's what we're doing today. Um, some good stuff here as we approach spring. There's snow all over the ground, but uh, don't let that fool you. It's going to be here before we know it. So appreciate the time, Jason, and uh, thanks for tuning in.